Welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be doing a remake of a previous analysis I did analyzing Brad Pitt. This was actually the first video I posted, but there was no explanation or voiceover in that video. So in this one, we will do a full analysis of Brad Pitt. Uh, before we begin, if you would like to order a face analysis, the links to that will be in the video description. And let's begin. So in Brad's front profile, we can see that one of his first flaws, which is not a severe flaw, but nevertheless it is a flaw, and that is his philtrum. So this region here is the philtrum. And it is too long relative to his chin height at only 1.84 times his philtrum length, excuse me. And this isn't necessarily a large flaw because the ideal range is 2.05 to 2.55, but it is still a minor flaw. Uh, the next exceptionally harmonious portion of his face is his facial shape. He has virtually an ideal face shape that is exactly 1.34 times longer than it is wide. And what this just means is that his face is neither too long or short. And you can see that here as well. It's just an ideal, pleasant face shape overall. And typically for a male ideal range, you want to be between 1.33 to 1.38. But close to that will be relatively harmonious as well. And the same can be said about his mid-face region. And we take the facial width height ratio at the mid-brow, and it is 1.91, which is perfectly ideal, and again indicates a mid-face that is neither too compact or too elongated. So that covers his mid-face and his face shape, and those are some of the two core components of an attractive face. So generally, an attractive face shape and mid-face region are going to produce an attractive face. His cheekbones are actually extremely high set, and the way we can tell that is, you see the widest portion of his face here is right next to the eyes. So you can see the eye line here, and we take this measurement divided by this, so A divided by B, and his are 92% of mid-face height. And that just indicates extremely high set cheekbones. Though, like, though the main differentiator is that his face is so wide, especially in the bigonial region, that it doesn't look discernibly high set. So they're not typically protruding. For example, we can demonstrate that in liquify. And we see that if we increase the indent around the zygomatic region, which is here, we can make the cheekbones appear more discernibly high set. However, the actual placement did not change at all. So here you can see the widest part is more clear. However, nothing's changed in his bone structure. We've just kind of hollowed out the muscularity in his face. So he just has a very muscular jaw region. So the the masseter muscles which insert on the ramus or the back portion of the jaw, I can demonstrate that here. So this is the ramus or the back portion and the masseter muscles insert like this actually all the way down here. So in the front it'll typically I don't want to say bloat the face, but it will lead to a more square, uniform appearance, which is not necessarily a bad thing, just something to note. In terms of facial thirds, excuse me, in terms of facial thirds, 
Brad has exceptionally proportionate facial thirds, which are virtually equal. So the upper third is 32.67%. The middle third is 33.57%. And the lower third is 33.86%. And if you're any good at math, you can see that none of these stray too far from one another. And they're all virtually about one third. So that is perfectly ideal, about as ideal as you can get. And generally, Brad's front profile is near flawless. There's nothing really outstandingly bad. His eye area, the same can be said. The eye spacing is impeccable. Like There's no flaws at all. And we see that relative to his facial width, that the distance between his pupils is 45.82%. And 45.82% is right near the perfect scientific ideal of 46%. But being in a general range around that will be perfectly ideal as well. And his eyes are also about one eye apart, which is the general cephalometric standard or facial measurement standard. They're about 0.93 eyes apart. So being between 0.9 and 1 eye apart will maximize facial harmony. His canthal tilt is also exceptionally high, and that is just the rays of the inner canthus relative to the lateral canthus or the outer canthus here. And his is 8.5 degrees in this photo though in this photo the head is slightly tilted down and I should release a video at some point demonstrating why that changes the canthal tilt but I will do that at a future point in this photo it is probably closer to 7 degrees either way it is ideal so it just goes to show that the pleasantness of his eyes has a large can be largely attributed to how upturned they are and the eye shape of course so let's talk about that for a second so his eye shape is perfectly ideal it doesn't get better than this to be honest and that is an almond eye shape with a slight downturn towards the medial canthus that would be this inner corner here so Generally, the most desirable eyes will have the slight downturn toward the medial, medial canthus. And in terms of eye shape, we can also use a descriptive term called the eye aspect ratio, which just measures how wide the eyes are versus how tall. And in his case, they are 3.6 times, which is right at the upper threshold ideal range. So any more than this, can begin to look too narrow, but in his case, it's perfect. And in terms of the jaw outline, also nothing really to note here as a flaw, so it's perfectly ideal. The jaw frontal angle is about 88 degrees, which is perfectly in the ideal harmonious range. So now let's go into his side profile. But before doing so, let's see what he scores. So overall, given all those measurements, I plug it into my formula, which has appropriate weights for each measurement. And his front profile scores an 89.8%, which is extremely high. And obviously, 100% is the maximum. So you can see that he doesn't have many flaws in the front profile. And that brings us to the side where most of his flaws, quote unquote, come in. So we can take a look at a few of those. And I think the largest one would be his lips in the side profile. So we can use a variety of lip assessments and this is called the H line. And you can just see like the general note I would make in his case is that his lower lip is too protrusive that's just the 
the main takeaway without going too too deep into it. So, so he fails all the four lip assessments, like pretty badly. And that definitely detracts from his total harmony score. In terms of his I'm trying to look on this sheet here. It's kinda of hard to read while making the video. In terms of the brow inclination, it's kind of hard to see with the cap, but we can assume that his brow doesn't doesn't just suddenly curve back like this. So we can just take it as it is here. And it is about 15, roughly 15 to 17 degrees. However, we want to also take this reference plane here to make sure, which is perfectly ideal. So his brow is slightly on the flatter side. However, it is not overly flat. And the I think the reason that is, is because his brow, despite having a prominent brow ridge, it doesn't really boss, is what the term is called. It doesn't really like protrude out. And you can imagine if the brow protrudes, the angle becomes more sloped back like that, more towards 20 to 24 degrees. And his nasofrontal angle, which is this angle here, is about 137.8 degrees, which is a bit outside of the ideal range in males, which is about 106 to 129 degrees. So that is a moderate flaw. Basically, his brow region is slightly more feminized. It's not overly feminized, but it carries over into his front profile as well. His brows are just neutrally tilted, they're not very domineering or upturned or striking. However, it works with his specific face shape. In terms of his facial flatness, he has perfect facial flatness, and you can just see that here. I'll, I'll demonstrate it with the red line. And it just takes these three points and you can just see that his profile is not overly flat or rounded. Convex is what it's called. And convexity is just a term. It can be used in a variety of contexts, like graphical context or financial modeling. But it just refers to the roundness of a curve. And his nasal projection is one of the final flaws we'll take a look at. And we just measure that in this way. So we take a reference line here, and then two points, and we divide this line by this line that goes all the way up to this reference line that is perpendicular to this reference line, which is a bit complex, but basically you can just see how small this line is relative to this line in simple terms, and it's 0.49, which is quite an unprotrusive and feminized ratio. Like generally women will have lower proportions. As you can imagine, the nose sticks out more, uh, less, excuse me. And if it sticks out less, the ratio will be towards the lower end. And generally a male face will want to be above 0.55. His other cephalometric assessments or occlusal indicators, which just means how well his jaw aligns is perfect so we have the nasofacial angle here which takes this angle and his is a perfect 31.7 degrees which is right in the ideal range which also indicates no real gaping holes in terms of facial harmony relative to his jaw structure, so he doesn't likely have a severe class 2 or class 3 occlusion. And the same can be said about his other facial assessments. In terms of his ramus, which we talked about earlier, so we said that the ramus was this back portion of the jaw, 
and this is the mandible and his ramus or the back portion is 0.68 times this distance which is the perfect ideal proportion and the last thing we'll touch on before getting a score is the recession quote unquote recession because we can't really classify someone as recessed based on one measurement we tend to use a variety of measurements and then look at the total information but in his case you can see that relative to this reference line we take a perpendicular line and this line from the pogonion or the chin doesn't meet the nasion here and ideally it should surpass this point and it does not in his case so we could classify him as minorly recessed, however, we did look at his other assessments and in that context I would not say he's recessed overall because imagine if we improved his jaw protrusion, if we increase the prognathism or the projection of his jaw, it would just look a bit uncanny and forgive me Angelina Jolie for this. So let's improve his jaw to align with that point. It just looks comical. And we'll see how that plays out here. So now it basically surpasses that point. And in his case, that isn't beneficial for his facial harmony because what it does is it compromises on all of these other assessments. So now you can see his profile is 179 degrees, which is overly flat. It's complete a complete straight line. Like I'll demonstrate it in red. So you can see a complete straight line virtually, which is not ideal at all. Generally, a slightly rounded profile is ideal. And the same can be said about his total or full facial convexity, which is also too flat if we increase that chin projection. So we definitely don't want to do that, and that is why I offer my analysis services which takes the full context of the face. And even with this angle, the nasofacial angle, you can see that it becomes too acute at 28 degrees when the ideal is 30 to 36 degrees. And even 30 to 40 degrees is normal, but imagine, so imagine the previous point of the jaw was here. I don't know what I just did. Okay, so now I remove the added projection, but we can do it again. So the previous point was there, and we improve the projection like that much around there. And the angle, the previous angle was about here, and now it closes down to here and becomes less than ideal. So. We have to look at the whole context of the face to get an accurate assessment of what would be ideal. And this is where people typically go wrong with surgery because I don't want to knock all surgeons, but they are in it to make a to make money. So they typically won't knock down your surgical proposal unless you suggest this to them outright. So it is important. And his overall side score is a 68.6%, which is still exceptionally high, it's just not top tier. And for an overall score, we get an 81.5%, which is exceptionally high facial harmony, and it scores 13th in the list of, at this point, probably 50 plus faces I've analyzed, celebrities that is. So he has an exceptionally harmonious face, and that makes sense. So let me know if you agree and what you found interesting about this video. Please keep suggesting any faces you would like to see. I see all of them, it's just tough to get to every single one within a given time frame, so be patient and I will get to every single one. Thank you for watching.